everybody. Welcome again to Pro Tips. Dave Dahl from Martin Guitar. Today we are going to be adding to our library of how to string my guitar files. And uh, today we're working on a slotted headstock. Uh, got a lot of requests from customers about uh, how to show this, so I hope this video will help out. So the first thing we're going to do, if you notice, this guitar already has the strings off of it. Um, it's always a good opportunity when you have the strings off of your guitar to uh, clean the fingerboard, maybe uh, get some Martin polish and polish up the, uh, the top of the guitar while you have access to it. Maybe clean some cobwebs out, some spider webs if you haven't gotten those out recently, a little dust mites, get some picks and stuff out of there if you need to. First step, after you do all of those things, um, I like to always install the bridge pins first. Now again, the reason that I like to do this is so that I can see how each bridge pin fits in to each hole. Uh, in some cases, like with the case with this guitar, these bridge pins are ebony. And if you have an organic material like ebony or bone or fossilized ivory or something like that, not every bridge pin is going to be an exact fit. And sometimes at the factory, we will um, We'll obviously try to make them fit in as uniformly as possible, but we may end up having to adjust a hole here and there. So you want to make sure um, that each one of the bridge pins fits in the hole exactly the way it should. Now the other reason that I like to do this is because it frees my hand up, so it's one less thing that I have to be picking up off the table while I'm doing this. So today I'll be stringing this guitar with the SP Lifespan 7100 lights. So I'll be starting uh, with the low E string. What I like to do is move from the bass side to the treble side. Um, so again, when you're taking them out of the pack, just please be mindful that they are a bit springy. So uh, keep them away from your face if you can, and everybody else's face if you're nice. Um, so what you wanna make sure you do when you're putting the strings into the bridge, again, make sure that the ball end is going to roll in so the hole is facing you, not up and down like this. We want to try to get the best possible contact of the bridge plate that we can. So we're going to roll that ball end in there, and while we're pushing down, I'm going to install the bridge pin, put that in, and pull up to make sure that it's tight, nice and snug against the uh, bridge plate. I have the G string in my hand here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And now I'll just follow along with the rest of the strings. A string and the B string. And finally D string and the E string. Now you might also notice one other thing while I'm doing this. Uh, I'll take care of another wives tale. Uh, while I'm stringing this. You notice I have all of the strings off of the guitar. So again, if you've heard, I don't know if it's safe for me to take all of the strings off of my guitar at one shot, should I do them one string at a time, perfectly safe to do all the strings in one, in, at one time. Um, what you don't wanna do when you're removing the strings is uh, take a giant pair of wire cutters and cut all six strings off at the same time because it could actually shock the guitar. But if you're just winding them down slowly, taking them all off, the guitar is perfectly fine. And I even recommend storing the guitar without the string tension on it. So perfectly safe like this. Just wanted to add that in there. So now that we've got everything taken care of down on the bridge end, we're gonna start actually putting everything together up here on the headstock. Now what you'll notice is I already have all of the posts set up so that they're about at a 45 degree angle. They're basically sort of following the same break angle as the, uh, the headstock itself. And uh, the reason that I wanna do that, as you'll see fairly quickly, when I take the, I'm gonna start now on the, uh, with the high E string, I'm gonna start with the treble side and move my way back. So high E string in, when I go into the hole, if I put my finger underneath, I can actually bring the string up so it comes right back up to the top again where I can gain access to it again so I don't have to be lifting the guitar and moving the guitar around. You leave the guitar sitting on its nice level spot uh, undisturbed. So now that I have the string through the post, we can start to wind it. Now if you've watched the other videos, um, how to string the, the six string, 12 string, even the nylon string, um, I talk about making sure that you have the proper amount of slack on the string. What I like to do, I'll pull the string through and I'll use my index finger of my right hand right around the first fret 
just so I have enough slack pulling off of there. Now, with the high E string and the low E string, since they are the furthest um, off the nut, the outside strings off of the nut, I like to wind those strings to the inside to keep them away from the spoons on the inside of the headstock so that the strings don't rub against those spoons. So the way that we do that, again, you're going to have your finger there at the first fret. I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap around the outside and then underneath the string. And then I'm going to pull it tight. And you'll get a little bit of a loop in there. Now you, there's still a little bit of play in there, so I like to do this little ratchet trick where I'll take my left hand and put it on the fingerboard like this and I'll actually pull up on the string. And when I pull up on the string, it tightens it right down on that post and now everything's nice and tight. So now's a good opportunity to cut this string off. We don't necessarily have to uh, wind the string up right now, but you know, when we actually do wind the string up, you don't want all of this tail hanging off here because it could damage the headstock. So very carefully get in there and just trim that off a little bit. So now we're gonna move along to the B string. Same thing, push that through, finger underneath so it pops out the top. Now the difference with this from the E string, I'm still going to use my finger to get the same amount of slack. But whereas with the E string when I wrapped around the outside to bring the spoon, you know, to get the string away from the spoons to wrap this way, I'm going to do the opposite with the B string. So I'm going to take this and wrap around the inside and then underneath and then pull it tight. And again, same thing, I'm going to take my left hand kind of ratchet that down a little bit and cut this off. Now what you should see, if you're looking down at this, you'll see the opposite effect. You'll see the E string where the wires wrap this way to the inside. With the B string, you'll see where the wires wrap to the outside. And the reason that we're gonna do that, I actually like to have the string overlap that little tang, that little tail, to really kind of lock it down. Same thing with the G string through and underneath, get the same amount of slack around the inside, underneath the string, pull it tight, a little bit of a ratchet. Now we're moving on to the base side. So we're going to do the same motions, but obviously since we're on the other side, everything is going to be opposite. So the D string up underneath. I'm now going to take my thumb onto the treble side around the first fret and get about that much slack. And again, going to go around the inside of the headstock underneath and pull that tight. Now again, when you're looking down at the string, you'll see that the tail is now facing you, coming towards the base side. Because again, we're gonna wind this to the outside. What you'll find as you get into more closer to the, uh, the low E string, the strings are obviously getting thicker. Because they're getting thicker, they want to fight you a little bit more with how they're bending. So uh, you remember those little hand grip exercise things your dad used to have growing up with the spring on it? Start working on that and get your forearms built up a little bit uh, to be able to bend these strings. Again, ratchet this one down a little. The low E is usually the, uh, the toughest one to do. But again, with the low E, the same as the high E, we want to wrap it to the inside. So again, thumb on the first fret. Now we're going to wrap this one around the outside and underneath instead of around the inside. So around the outside, underneath, pull it tight. Ratchet it down a little bit. Cut it off. Now when you're cutting these off, the other thing to keep in mind 
is you don't want to have a lot of tail. Again, if, there, if that tail is very long coming off of there, it's going to scrape along the inside of the headstock when you start winding it because of the string tension. So it could potentially damage the inside. So if you have too little, it'll pop out from underneath the string. If you have too much, it'll damage the inside of the headstock. So just be careful and be mindful of that when you're doing this. But now you're ready to uh, go ahead and start winding the strings up. So when you're wrapping these strings, again, just like with any other guitar, I want you to keep constant tension on the string. Hold it with your, like, I'm going to be winding because, again, I'm lucky enough to have one of these. But even if you're doing it, you know, by hand or if you have a crank winder, whichever way you're doing it, make sure you have constant tension with your opposite hand so that you're making sure that the uh, string wraps tightly around that post. So when we're wrapping the string, Again, we're going to want to wrap to the inside to keep it away from the uh, spoons here on the, the stock. Um, especially guitars with a, with a really wide nut, if it has a 1 and 7 eighth spacing or 1 and 13 16 spacing, it's going to get really close to the inside of these spoons. So you definitely want to make sure that you wrap those strings to the inside. But with the A string, D string, G string, and B string, we can wrap to the outside. Now that all the strings are wound, you're ready to tune it up and play it. So I hope this helped. Remember, good luck. Play them lots. Thanks. Uh -huh.